OK, welcome to this tutorial on how to solve a trig equation. The example I'm going to do now is one that involves the sine of an angle, theta in this case, equals a positive value, 0.5. And the method I'm going to use is called the quadrant method. Now this is a method that I discussed in an earlier tutorial where we took this point here as 0 degrees and turning anti-clockwise this was 90 degrees then 180 degrees 270 and back home to 360 degrees and we called this the first quadrant and if we took the sine cosine or tangent of any angle between 0 and 90 degrees we always found that it came out as a positive answer so we wrote down that all of those three trig ratios were positive then we repeated this for 90 degrees and 180 degrees and found that only the sine ratio was positive. And then for, nine, sorry, for 180 degrees to 270 degrees we found that only the tan ratio was positive. And finally 270 degrees to 360 degrees only the cosine ratio cos was positive. OK. Now, how do we use the quadrant diagram then to solve an equation like this? Now, in this equation, we have that the sine of an angle is a positive value, 0.5. And so we ask ourselves, where is sine positive? And we can see from this diagram that sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So I'll just rub these out, OK? But if you can just remember that sine is positive in the first and the second quadrants. What we do is we draw a line in the first quadrant where sine is positive, marking this angle, and then we turn to the second quadrant and we draw another line but make sure it's equally inclined to this horizontal line uh, as you had in the first uh, case here. So mark this in as being the same angle. Next we need to find out what theta is. And we're not going to be able to find out theta unless we have theta in a particular range. And many questions that you do will ask you to solve equations like this for theta in a particular range. And one of the common ranges is theta is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay? So if we're looking at this range, then what we do is we go back over to the 0 degrees, starting from here we turn in an anti-clockwise direction, okay? remembering that this angle up here is 90 degrees. So the first value of theta that we come across is the one up to here. We always turn to each blue line, so the first blue line is this one up through here, so we mark this one in as theta. We then go back again, starting from here, we turn anti-clockwise until we come to the next blue line. So we turn all the way around until we get it, there we go, and mark in that that is theta. Always get in the habit of marking in your angle, the angle that's here. So if this said x, make sure you mark this in as x. OK, now we've got to calculate this red theta and the green theta. And the way we can do that is just simply on the calculator by taking the inverse sine okay, of 0.5. So theta equals the inverse sine of 0.5. And the answer that you should get, okay, you should know this one actually without using your calculator, but it turns out to be 30 degrees. So just mark that in there. And 30 degrees is an acute angle between 0 and 90 degrees, so that must correspond to this red theta. Now the red angle theta is exactly the same size as this blue angle that we marked in earlier, so I'm going to mark that blue angle in then as 30 degrees. And because we said that these two angles were exactly the same size, it will mean that this one here is also 30 degrees. And that's going to help us find the green theta now. Because to get that green theta, we know that to turn all the way around to here, half a turn is 180 degrees. So all we've got to do is do 
180 degrees minus the 30 degrees and that gives us 150 degrees. So this angle, the green angle theta, is 150 degrees. So that's our two solutions of theta in the range 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Now you will find that another common range for solving this kind of question will be to solve for theta between minus 360 degrees and say 0 degrees. Now if this was the case it means that what we have to do is just draw again our quadrant diagram. Remember, start with 0 degrees there. And mark in your blue lines where the sine of an angle is a positive value. And that would be in the first quadrant and your second quadrant. Remember to make sure that your blue lines are inclined at the same angle to the horizontal line here. Then we need to put in the values of theta that we need. Now in the last example we started from here and turned to the first blue line. But what happens if we do that is that we're going in the um, sense of 0 degrees to 360 degrees going round this way. But that would be out of range because we're not allowed to have any angle going beyond 0 degrees. So what we do is we start from here and we turn in the other direction, turning around like so. Because if we turn in this direction, this angle is now minus 90 degrees. This angle over here is minus 180 degrees. And so onto here would be a turn of an angle that is less than minus 360 degrees. So this is a possible theta. We've also got the fact that theta could equal a turn in this direction all the way around to this one. Okay? And still be a turn of less than minus 360 degrees. Now we saw earlier that when we worked out theta as being the inverse sine of 0.5, the calculator gave us that theta was 30 degrees. But clearly 30 degrees is not one of these red angles or the green angle, which by the way I should have written that in as theta. Okay, so how do we use this result of 30 degrees? Well, as we saw earlier, the 30 degrees relates to this angle up here, which also means that this angle in here, this blue angle in here, is also 30 degrees. And we can use the fact that of this 30 degrees to help us calculate the red one, which is going to be a turn of 180 degrees plus 30 degrees more. That's 210 degrees. But 210 degrees is really a turn in that direction. We're turning in this direction. So it's a negative turn. So what we have, you've got to be very careful to remember that it's minus 210 degrees. Similarly, this green angle, okay, this green turn will be a negative turn. And you can see that to turn the full way would have been 360, we're 30 degrees less, so that would have been a turn of 330 degrees normally. But because we're turning clockwise around here, it's a turn of minus 330 degrees. So, in all, what we have is that at the end of the day, because we only need angles between minus 360 degrees and zero, the only ones that we need are the minus 210 degrees and the minus 330 degrees. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this tutorial and hopefully you've been able to see how I've used the quadrant diagram to solve the equation and how I've used it in the two given ranges. And you should be able to then apply this idea in similar examples.